Michael, can everyone hear me up the back? Is that loud enough? Cool. You can't hear me? Cool. Now? Perfect. Uh, so my name's Michael. Uh, I'm the CTO and um, co-founder of a cloud management platform called Cumulus. Uh, so we help organisations um, bring automation, governance, visibility um, to, to, to customers like Symantec, Monash University. Uh, we just started with an Australian bank uh, and, and bring visibility to their cloud environments. Uh, I think um, depending on where you are in your, your cloud journey, as you, um, as, as you do more and more in, in an Amazon or, or clouds, you start to get more and more accounts, you start to get more and more objects or more and more servers, more and more volumes, more and more snapshots, more and more services, and you may not necessarily understand, and you start to get more and more bills, uh, and people start asking more and more questions uh, as to what, what you're spending your money on. And what starts to happen then is you need to find visibility in that and work out what's, what, is, uh, what is producing all those bills. Uh, and a lot of organisations will start to, uh, to implement stronger governance into their, um, into their environments. Um, we've got some really strong partners um, globally. Um, what do you call it? Um, we're, we're dealing with the likes of Tech Mahindra, Persistent, um, Deloitte. Uh, so we've got some very big names behind us now. Sorry, I was on, I was on beer duty, which is... Uh... Okay. As you may notice from my accent, we're an Aussie-based company. Um, uh, where was my laptop that was here? Just oh, no, that's Tim's. Ah, my laptop's over there. Yeah. Sorry, that four points I had earlier. <laughs> cool. So, I'm just going to kick off with a few questions. Um, what do you call it? Um, so, I assume we all use Amazon here, or just a show of hands if you're currently using Amazon. Cool. What, what are your key? Co what are the key concerns for using Amazon? Cost. Is that a concern? Simplicity. Sorry? Simplicity. Simplicity? Yep. Security, anyone? Not really? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> no concerns? Cool. Sorry? More services? <laughs> I think they need to make, the, make some of the existing ones more solid before they introduce too many more. I, the door's over there. <laughs> <laughs> who, really, who really needs to build games when I can't scale uh, SAP in uh, EC2? <laughs> Sorry. Um, cool, I'll just get this set up. Sorry guys, one second. So quick, quick another, another question. Um, those of you using Amazon, um, are you all using it to generate revenue for your organization? Everyone? Yep. Uh, and next question. Um, how many accounts of those of you that are, or how many Amazon accounts do you have for those of you generating revenue? Is it one? One account? Cool. What about if I was to tell you that you're putting your company's revenue at risk? And there's a company called Code Spaces out of the UK, uh, and, and a number of all, uh, other organisations. I don't know if you've, um, if anyone's heard this story. In about mid 2014, someone was able to access their Amazon account. They had all their production, all their backups in the one account. Someone was able to access that account. You might say, how hard is it to get into an Amazon account? I bet you someone in this room's had a Russian Bitcoin hacker get into their Amazon account and spin up a million spot instances. It happens all the time. Also uh, an employee or something along those lines, a disgruntled ex-employee. But this company, Code Spaces, was, was threatened and asked to give a, a million dollars money or something along those lines, um, or they were going to delete all of their services. They were some 15 people startup. Um, they had a lot of source repositories or they were like an SVN backup service or something along those lines. That person did not wait for that million dollars to come. Probably wasn't gonna come anyway. And they destroyed all of their data. That company is now out of business. So completely out of business. So you say, how do you fix this? You do something really simple. For any of you that said you've got one and you generate revenue, you go home tonight, you sign up for another Amazon account and you move a copy of your snapshots, whether, it your, whether it's your RDS snapshots or your, um, what do you call it, your um, EBS snapshots and you move that into the other account. You don't give the same access out to all your people in your organization. At least at that point, you've got two accounts. Okay, I just urge you, as a founder of a startup um, like that's put my life into my business over the last four years, it is the most important thing I would want any of my staff members to do. 
So if any of you are working for startups, first thing you do, go home and do that. Um, or use, use a platform that will automate all of that for you, um, which I'll show you a little, little, little bit about shortly. Um, so hopefully that's, uh, that is a little bit helpful. Um, what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to show you through a little bit about what we do and what we help customers with. And I'll just log into the platform. Is anyone nervous after that? <laughs> um, so essentially we're, we're a, a portal or a dashboard. Um, so we're available as a SaaS product or as an appliance. Um, and, and we help people with, with strong governance, right? And I'll sort of explain a little bit of that quickly. But what we've done is, I've always been a, um, in, in infrastructure or in, in, uh, been an infrastructure designer helping application teams scale or, or build scale on their applications. And so I've always spent a lot of time drawing pictures of environments and then basically socialising that with 50,000 teams in an enterprise, getting everyone to agree to it, which is more force than, um, than negotiation at times, and then handing that to, um, to engineering teams to go and provision all those services. So what I wanted to do is I wanted to combine the two together. So create one artifact. So draw a picture of an environment and provision that directly into a cloud provider. So I'm able to actually skip out any problems with my documentation. So my documentation is always current. If I can build workflow and governance into a platform, I can save all of that walkthrough and say, oh, is this okay from a security perspective? Is this okay from a you know, cost perspective? Is this okay from a you know, whatever else is, um, is in your organization? And I'm able to push that or a technology perspective. Am I, am I allowed to use Windows 2003 um, or something along those lines? I can skip all that because I've only got access to the resources that I'm allowed to use in that organization. So what we set off to do is build a visualization in engine that enables me to load a, a, a lot of workflow in. So a lot of workflow or governance rules. Say for example, this half of the room here, I may say uh, uh, I might uh, application group number one, and they're only allowed to use Amazon Linux and T2.micro and RDS MySQL, and that's all that they're allowed to use. Whereas this here might be the admin group, and they're allowed to use any service. So I'm able to set up policy and restrict based on that. Then I come and I design visually. So very simply, unless you're using a Mac for the first time in a couple of months. I design my environment in a very simple manner. I'm able to see things like the estimated cost. Uh, I think that's a big use case that we always get in, um, what do you call it, in, in cloud environments. A manager or a, um, a project will ask, what's this going to cost to run in Amazon? Uh, I'm sure you've all had that question before. And most people go, I don't know. We'll find out later. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm only allowed to use the services that have been that have been that have been given to me. I know it's, it just looks a little bit off on that one, but you can see it over here. I've got all my instance types that have been shared to me. I've got all my integration to things like Puppet and Chef um, or Ansible, uh, and and I've got the governance around those. Um, what do you call it? Which particular thing? So, for example, I'm allowed to deploy the API onto this server, and that'll go and bootstrap that image and then pull that from a you know whatever um, configuration management platform that you're using. I'm able to set things like governance rules. I'm only I'm, I'm on this half of the room that's only allowed to use the T1.micro at the moment. Uh, and that'll allow me to do that. These templates are completely, um, what do you call it, um, you know, are, are JSON. Uh, they're exportable to code. Um, you can edit them as code and then you can bring them back in. Or you can use a wizard, depending on the skill set of your organization. And you can modify these and say move them to another region, for example, or change the um, config from a production sizing to a dev sizing or something along those lines, um, depending on your, um, your requirements. You're able to do things like embedding naming conventions and tagging conventions into the platform. Because uh, I think, what do you call it, um, most accounts or most services or most uh, Amazon accounts that I work with a lot of the time, I would find probably about a, tell me, 15% compliance on tagging. Would that be about right? 15 to 20% compliance. And given that tagging controls a lot of the commercials, it can control a lot of permissions, um, it's obviously very key to have that, um, that, that kind of level of compliance up. Uh, and we allow you to enforce them based on your custom business logic. Um, so, for example, if you've got departments, if you've got products, 
Uh, we allow you to specify all of those things and then basically, um, what do you call it, automatically name the objects based on those particular, um, particular rule sets. Uh, as you can see here, the simplicity of doing something like adding a volume is as simple as dragging that volume onto the, um, onto the platform here. Uh, so very simple to do. Uh, I'm also able to do other services, but I won't go into that um, level of detail. All of these um, templates are revision controlled, so you can fully uh, revert back to previous revisions, um, and you can do anything that you need to do in, um, in that space. When you hit the big go button, that goes off, and as you can see here, it's gonna uh, force me to tag everything um, appropriately. Um, that'll go off and send that directly into, a, um, into the cloud provider. We also support that other um, company, the Mic Micro um, thing that, um, that you're talking about. But their, uh, their service doesn't work that well anyway, so... Uh. <laughs> Once that's built, um, it becomes what we call an environment and it can be managed in accordingly. So you can do things like... Um, I'll just change this. becomes what we call an environment. So you can do things like cost alerting on those things. Um, so you can set up alerts, you can set up delegated authorities. Uh, so say for example, if it goes over $100, um, you can set it up to say that uh, I want this to alert. So you can put pro budget or project budgets into the, the platform and that'll all, um, what do you call it, um, to, uh, that'll all alert there. You can do things like automate, automate stop and start, um, and all sorts of things like that. You can also see a cost advisor, which will drill into things like unused services or over spec services. If you've had a load balancer that hasn't passed traffic for 15 days, it'll tell you that that load balancer is not being used. If you've got a server that's sitting on 1% CPU, it'll tell you that you should move it down a size um, and, and things like that um, and tell you the cost benefit that's available. It also nicely breaks down all the unit costs of all the services. As you can see here, um, I think financial visibility or financial, the ability to actually understand what something costs in the cloud is becoming very important um, and gives you ability to drill down on a lot of those things. Coming back to what I was talking about before, we're able to do things like set up backup preferences. So you're able to actually set up an additional account, create policies, and then schedule them off to, a, um, to another account and automate those backups. So for example, you can actually choose multiple environments very simply like this, add, an, add another Amazon account and that'll automatically move all those snapshots across to that other account um, without, um, without too many um, or without any, any issues there. Th through here, I won't go through it because there's a lot of detail here. It's all around governance. Uh, so you can set up workflows. You can set up things like you're only allowed to provision to dev account or you're allowed to provision to this VPC or you're allowed to do XYZ, um, you're only allowed to use RDS MySQL um, and all sorts of policy that, um, that you'd expect in an enterprise. Probably um, one of the, um, the most powerful things that we've, um, we've released, and it's actually free, um, so you can sign up online as a SaaS product, um, it's, you know, it's, it's completely free, it's not a trial or anything along those lines, it's a full discovery engine. Uh, I think, what do you call it, um, it will go through your account it will scan all your accounts and it will go through and list all the regions that you've got services in. If you go through here, it'll show you the cost of each of those VPCs. You can see my um, dummy data here, that's $79. You can then drill down on that cost and actually it'll break it down by service and then by the service itself. So you're able to actually see at the top here, I think I've got things like servers, which is NA because they're all turned off. And then I've got volumes, which are like $17, and it breaks down those services. Again, this is available completely free from our, um, what do you call it, um, just off our website. Next, I've actually, we've actually exposed the service advisor, where I can actually go in and see all my detached or unused services. Again, this is still free, um, and you get a commercial value. I think when we ran this for a, a very large security vendor, I may have mentioned their name before, that potential benefit was like $17,000. This does happen. It, it's yeah, like people will shut down environments. They'll have heavily provisioned IOPS services. It'll be on a spend of 100 or 150,000. 
they'll shut them down, they need the data, they won't think about the commercial impact. When you put a number in front of them, they go, whoa, that volume's costing me $4,000, I better do something about it. Um, so they'll prioritize um, dealing with that. Lastly, as part of that free offering, I'm able to actually visualize that environment. So it's not an environment that we've built, it's an environment that you've built, and we're able to give you a pictorial view of that environment um, that you're able to export to a PDF and use for your documentation. Again, that's available for free. Uh, all you need to do is go to our website. So this is a picture of a full VPC. It obviously gives me the cost here again, and I'm able to actually then filter that by tag. So I can actually break it down and filter by tag. What we actually do, and I'll show you this in a second, we're able to use multiple filters and I'm able to break it down to true environments because uh, a VPC to me is not an environment, a VPC is a network um, and you might have multiple, um, you know, multiple environments, you might have a dev, a test, you might have multiple dev environments in the platform. All we've done here is all we've done is, to, is tag that load balancer I think it was tagged with the name environment and then basically the value was one and then it pulls all the dependent services back automatically and we'll show you that on a page um, and that's, that's available as part of that free offering. It's also got your, um, your RDS that's sitting out in the subnet group there. Uh, you can export that to, um, to PDF um, and that's available um, completely free online. So check it out. Um, that's pretty much all I've got to, um, to show today. Um, is there any questions guys? How, how does this integrate with the CloudFormation? Can you import export templates? Uh, you can't import, but you can export to CloudFormation. Um, but we discover, see how this has been discovered into the platform? I can take this and I can turn that into one of our templates. So it can't, it can't take the code, but it can take the services and turn them, into, uh, turn them into one of our templates. And then once it's an environment, it can turn it back into CloudFormation as well. What will be the difference between the designer, the CloudFormation designer, except the cost? Uh, governance. Governance. So, for example, CloudFormation just writes a thing, you go and provision it, good luck. And you do that 50,000 times. I will say that you're only allowed to provision $1,000 per month, and all you're allowed to use is the latest version of Amazon Linux and the latest version of something else. So it actually, and, and not allow you to use the marketplace, for example, not allow you, only allow you to use one object out of the marketplace. So, or not allow you to use an internet connected environment. So it actually set all of those go like governance rules for the different groups in your organization. So the governance are predefined? The governance are predefined by a group in the organization um, or, you know, by a higher power, whatever, someone that wants to control commercials, someone that wants to control security and risk, um, someone that wants to, um, to set, set rules and boundaries, basically. Um, you can all do, also do things like tagging, all of those things um, that it will set for, for the different groups. Is this not where you can order the governing rules? Uh, you, you can obviously, as an admin, it's full access management, full enterprise access management. Um, so if you've got the rights to edit the, um, what do you call it, the governance rules, well, of course you can, you can change them. But if you're a user that doesn't have those rules, you'd have to get that changed by your admin. Basically, you can set precedents. Exactly, exactly. So um, I'm not sure this was covered, but how does this go with IAM? Uh, so it's basically, um, so the free products is the read-only IAM role, read-only IAM account. Um, the full product is currently a one-to-one -one mapping with a, um, what do you call it, inline policy. Um, but in the next month or probably four to six weeks, it'll be um, like the trust between accounts will be um, implemented as well. Um, so it'll use the, um, you know, the, the, what do you call it, the trust. We, we've, we're fully SAML integrated, so you can use SAML, you can integrate it into Gmail, etc., etc. So, um, yeah. Any other questions, guys? So once you get this started, how soon you can use it? Can you use it? Immediately, yeah. Immediately. How much does it cost? Um, so obviously there's a completely free offering. Um, so the, um, what do you call it, is available free. Um, the discovery tool is completely free. Um, the full product offering, I think, is a percentage, or is a percentage of the services, and a percentage of the services we manage. Um, obviously we don't manage a lot of those services, so things like traffic and that we don't manage. Um, but it works out to be about four to six, uh, four to six percent, depending on your um, what you're doing um, in your account. Okay. So that's all. Uh, on our monthly level, that's correct. Yeah, that's correct. Yeah.
So purely consumption based model. If it's a large spend, uh, we generally um, work out you know a, a, an organisation cost or something along those lines out. Um, but yeah, cool, awesome. Thanks, guys. Cheers.